Good day, Grade Tens. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at dissolving ionic solids. But what is an ionic solid? Now, in the last lesson, we learned about electronegativity, and we realized that electronegativity was a measure of how strongly an atom holds onto its own electrons and attracts other electrons to it. Now, if the electronegative difference between the atoms and the molecule is greater than 1.9, we say that the molecule has ionic bonding. That means that there are very strong electrostatic forces holding the atoms together in the molecule. Let's look at an example. Let's look at sodium chloride, which is table salt. Again, we've got this beautiful periodic table, which has got all the electronegativities. Now, sodium chloride is made up of sodium, and if we look over here, we can see that the electronegativity of sodium is 0.9, which means it doesn't hold on to electrons very well at all. And chlorine has, over there, an electronegativity of 3, which means it not only holds on to its electrons very well, but it also will attract electrons from other atoms. So the electronegativity difference is going to be 2.1, which means that it's ionic. That means that it's going to be very strongly bonded together. Now let's see what happens when we add an ionic substance to water. Sodium chloride crystals are held together by attractive forces between the positively charged sodium and negatively charged chloride ions. When a crystal of sodium chloride is placed into water, the hydrogen ends of polar water molecules attract the negatively charged chloride ions and gradually surround... Okay, so I know that he's going to tell us this, but just watch here. Here are your water molecules, and here are your little... Um, this is the oxygen, and these are hydrogens. And they are surrounding this. But the hydrogens are positive, right? So let's carry on. Under. Likewise, the oxygen ends of water molecules are attracted to and surround the positively charged sodium ions. The hydrated ions drift away into the solution, allowing new water molecules to surround newly exposed ions. Gradually, the entire crystal dissociates into solution. Right, so now let's just summarize what we actually learned to that. When we have an ionic substance and it's added to water, the forces of attraction between the polar water molecules and the positive, negative, and, positive and negative ions occur. Right. These forces of attraction are intermolecular forces. That means that they are forces between molecules. Intermolecular means not within the molecule, but between the molecules. These are iron dipole forces. The dipole is the water because it's a polar molecule. And the ions are, for example, in this case, the chloride ions and the sodium ions. And they're weak temporary forces. So we saw in that little video that the, basically what would happen is the water molecule would come along. The intermolecular force will overcome the electrostatic forces between the chlorine and sodium and they will pull the chloride ion away and similarly the water molecules but with the oxygen end facing it will pull the sodium ion apart. I mean so basically what happens is your sodium and chloride crystals are pulled apart. Then what happens is each ion is surrounded by water molecules. So you've got here, you can see here's your negative chloride ion and it's surrounded by the water molecules but note how the positive hydrogen um, atoms are facing the negative chloride ion. Similarly, here is a positive sodium ion and this time the negative oxygen atoms are face, placing them. So when we're talking about dissolving we're actually made up of two processes. The first is dissolution and the second is hydration. So the dissolution was the process in which the ionic substance breaks down into ions. So that's the point where the water molecules are pulling the chloride and sodium ions off the molecule, the big crystal. And then you've got hydration. And this is the process in which the cations, the positive ions, and the anions, the negative ions, become surrounded by water molecules. 
Okay, so when they become surrounded by the water molecules, that's hydration. So if we had to write that as an equation, we would say that sodium chloride, which is a solid, but in this case it's been dissolved into water, breaks down into sodium ions and chloride ions. So it would be NaCl, the solid, has been broken down to Na+, but now it's aqueous because it's been dissolved into water, and chloride ions, and again it's aqueous because it's been dissolved into water. So now you know how it goes about that we've got ionic solutions and how the ionic solids dissolve in the water. Please remember the two processes and learn them properly. Thank you very much, Grade 10s. Hope you have a great day.